just here to give a video on giving y'all glory giving y'all glory coming from randall j brewer i'm gonna be sharing that with you today i'm also going to be sharing coming from hosea 6 chapter and also the latter rains coming uh which uh spoken of by ellen g white and maranatha the lord is coming on page uh see two 12, the ceiling and the latter rain. And it was really amazing. I was looking at that, the ceiling and the latter rain. And then uh, Yeshua gave me Hosea 6 this morning. And when you, when you start seeing me read Hosea 6, you'll find out he's mentioning the uh, latter rains in Hosea 6 as well. So I thought that was really amazing. But before I get to those things, I want to go to... I want to go over here to this article on the screen. I'm telling you, Thursday night. Wow, Thursday night, people. No joke. This is a true testimony. Thursday night, we was sit I was sitting here uh, on my laptop and looking at my uh, iPhone or my phone, my phone. I don't have an iPhone, my cell phone. And, um, and this article was out on the Facebook page. Um, and it wasn't this message. It was saying this man had, um, like it says here, it said, um, Texas city, Texas says three young children were found dead Thursday in an apartment. They were with a woman who had a gunshot wound to her head. A man described as a person of interest gave himself up and is in police custody. But that wasn't the case at first. They was looking for this man. They didn't know who, who he, where he was, who he was. And so I send a prayer line out on Facebook and I'm not, I kid you not. I, I, and I told the angels of God to go and get this man, to stop him immediately. And in 30 minutes or less, 30 minutes or less, they, this man turned himself in. I just tell you people, I have to keep telling, sharing these testimonies with you because this is what we're going to have to do in the end times. You're going to have to call on the angels, the living angels of God to go forth and capture people, uh, protect people. Uh, go after uh, your family members and chase them to his bosom, whatever. But this is so important. And I had to share that with you because a lot of you guys was on Facebook at the time. I know Tammy was one of them. And it was, uh, I think, Jesse and some others. And I'm telling you, we prayed this prayer in a unison, in agreement. And this is what happened. The angels got him. I just thought that was absolutely amazing, amazing testimony. And so... Um, I'm going to go over here now and get some news coming from India. Uh, and I have some other pictures I'm going to show from India, from Ramaru. He's doing a, he did a, a feast. Uh, uh, he had a, a New Year's kind of thing. I don't know with some of the congregation in his area. And I'm going to share the pictures that he sent me today. And, um, but this is coming from another missionary in India on the uh, southeast part of India. And I know for his protection, I'm not going to mention a name, but uh, anyway, he sent this to me today and he wanted me to share it with you guys. So I'm going to read it to you. I'm going to read it to you because it's a lot going on. A lot of persecutions going on, a lot of tribulations are starting. And I know last night I was reading about in Massachusetts, they are making, they want people to have a flu shot. They want to demand that you have it, you know. And I'm like, I will never take one. They will have to just kill me, shoot me down, whatever they want to do. But I think it's part of trying to get us, uh, uh, get us, um, what I want to say, the word I want to say, uh, get us conditioned, okay, conditioned to take in the uh, chip and the mark later. You know, I tell you guys, these things start in little, little, you know, the devil always start out small with little things. Then he'll get you seduced. And then he don't have nothing to worry about later for you to or take whatever they want to put in front of you. And that's why we have to be very, very careful who we're going to serve, okay? And that's why I thought it was a good article, a good uh, opportunity to talk about giving Yah glory uh, that Randall uh, J. Brewer sent me this morning. I'm going to just put it in here with this message today. Uh, because, you know, we need to understand who we're going to serve, who we're going to stand, who we're going to die for, who we're going to stand for. We shouldn't have to be uh, trying to figure it out when the trouble come. You should already know who you're going to stand for, who you're going to serve. And, you know, once you know that, Yahweh help you and you know you'll be able to stand and be victorious 
But when you can't make up your mind who you're going to serve and you're ying, 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 you know, you're in the world, you're in the God, you're in the world, you're in, you know, you don't know who you're going to serve, who you're going to follow. Uh, it's not really, it's not really good. It's not really good. You need to make your mind up people, make your mind up. Okay. Who you going to serve? And so, um, let me go here and read this here coming from India forwarded as received churches, Christian homes. And I cannot pronounce these words. I'm sorry. Okay. So I'm just going to put the arrow underneath and you can see them here on the screen will not be there after 2021 if BJ if BJP continues to win in India and the BJP stands for uh I wrote, looked it up I know it, I it's it's a party it's the major political party in India and it's just B H A R A T I Y A J A N A T A party okay that's what that stands for BJP so he says, BJP has planned to declare India as Hindu country. To pass this bill, they need two-thirds, uh, six or seven percent majority in these cities here, whatever these cities and nations are. The same bill has to be passed in at least 15 state assemblies. Now NDA needs 35 more MPs in Lok Sabha, Lok Shasha, something and 80 more MPs in this other city here, Rashamaha, to get two-third majority. If Christians and Muslims continue to sell, they vote or uh, divide the votes, uh, not voting at all, will make India to be declared as Hindu country, and Christians and Muslims will lose right to vote, like in China, France, Burma countries, etc. Only way to stop this is by making BJP, you know, the uh, major the major political party there in India, make them lose by voting to the other strongest candidate from any other party. But all Christians and Muslims of each area, Jamet, should unite and decide whom to vote to defeat the BJP. Those who are selling your votes, you are actually selling your religion deed, deed uh, church sermons, uh, ballions and missions, would be banned. Same about dividing the votes. So coming elections are not just elections. It's the matter of existence of Christians and Muslims and other minorities and our freedom to practice our religion. Pass this message to all Christians, Muslims, and other minorities. If we fail to defeat BJP, we have to be ready to live like slaves, like in China and other countries. Every Christian and Muslim be awake. Think and study about this. Act wisely and pray to God Almighty. May God give us ability to understand and unite. Okay, so you know right now the Muslims need to have a savior as well. But I know the Hindus want to, they want, they, they want India to be a nothing but Hindus there. They don't want Muslims. They don't want Christians. They don't, you know, they don't want none of these minorities there at all. They just want Hindus. Okay, that's what this is about. So I pray that the Muslims will give their life to Yeshua HaMashiach and join the Christians in fighting this situation. Because, you know, uh, the Hindus are killing the Muslims over there as well. They, they, don't want Hindu, they don't want Muslims. They don't want Christians. They just want all Hindus, okay? So let's pray about this situation. Uh, thank you so much for sending it to me from India, my friend over there, the missionary brother. Uh, he say forward this to every Christian and Muslim in India and explain this to your family and friends. Okay. So I'm just going to leave that there and I'm going to go over here to Ramaru and show these nice pictures. And then I'm going to get over to the main meat of the matter for the day's message. Giving y'all glory and the latter rain's coming. Uh, he says here, dear, my respected Jean, sir, and monitor, madam, greeting in Christ. I conducted 2019 New Year prayer meetings in my church with my church members. We pray for our Fill My Cup ministry and End Time Dream and Visions and Feed My Sheep to Worldwide Program and your family and givers families. I gave some clothing to widows in my church and I gave love feasts for church members with your names. Thank you, my madam brother, for your love and kindness and encouragement. I don't forget your grace in my life. I'm praying for you. Thank you for your help. Take care of your health with respect, Ramaru. And so these are the pictures coming from uh, over there. I'm going to show them real briefly here now to you. 
and uh, beautiful pictures, and they got together for this uh, after the new, you know New Year coming in, I guess, and they had this feast and a uh, wonderful feast, a lot of pictures here. So I'm gonna briefly float through them, okay? So I hope you guys can see them. I'm gonna kind of go through them really quickly here. Uh, they are in his church, I guess, at his little church. Uh, all the smiling faces and beautiful dresses and people, um, and. Uh, he been doing a Bible study. Uh, I know he do a lot of Bible study classes. I told you we always support him with the food to help the brothers who come there to get Bible studies, the free Bible studies. And uh, so we sent an offering in here not long ago to help him with some of these uh, things going on. Because these people, uh, like I say, they walk many miles away to get to some of these meetings and Bible studies. And so we always try to help him with a little contribution. Uh, and so, uh, he's given out clothing here with the went to the women and the widows, the widows. And you know, it's a lot of widows actually in tech in Africa as well. I was looking at that the other day. A lot of widows are in Africa. A lot of orphanages are, are in Africa as well because of all the people who have been slain and killed and persecuted, you know? And so that's why it's so important to support these nations and to support the homeless in our own country and the things of this nature because a lot of people are just going through hardships right now hard times hardship uh, i'm glad to have a report came in from a brother this week that he got a job god supplied him with a job uh we have a lot of uh, different testimonies come in different times uh so we know god can supply our needs people if you would trust in him and give him glory that's what i'm gonna be reading about in a few minutes giving him glory you know praising him thanking him that's why i know on my channel i was we was looking at the uh this week we were saying the stamps gonna if the stamps go up we may have to stop sending out thank you cards and i was telling my husband that i really love the thank you cards because every time yeshua healed a person a lot of them went away and said nothing didn't even thank yeshua you know and so I like to thank people for everything they do for this ministry, this channel, uh, you know, because you never know, you know, you take things for granted. I don't like taking things for granted. I like to let people know how appreciated we are for every dime that come into this ministry to help the people in, uh, in the international countries and to help the people here and locally, uh, like this, uh, past, uh, uh, holiday season, we gave out blankets to the homeless in our own, in our, in our own hometown, and we also gave out uh, uh, clothing and, and uh, all those things that they need, gloves. The gloves just came in. It came in late, but I'm going to be giving those out to a few people. Uh, so, we you know, it's good to do these kind of things, people, uh, to help uh, others in need. Because Yeshua cared more about the people in need than he did anything else, you know. He, he cared about helping others, always helping others. It wasn't about trying to... Uh, uh, brag about what I have and what car I'm driving and what house I live in and all these material things that people get hung up on. Idol tree, I call it, you know, making idols out of things. He was concerned about the people eating. They are eating here now, having a feast here together. So uh, I really appreciate all the hard work all the missionaries brothers are doing in India, Africa, uh, over in Pakistan, uh, and different other parts of the country. I wish we had some other missionaries in China and different places. You never know how God going to work this out. He's always sending people my way. So we'll see how that happened. Uh, we really want to thank Bob Barbara, uh, uh, for his ministries, feed my sheep ministries, and also end time dream and visions, his channel. Uh, so we are just very thankful to work with, uh, all these people, the brother, uh, the sister over in, uh, Southern California just went to India and visited a uh, 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 northern part of India. And uh, uh, it was just a wonderful opportunity to have her go over there with other members of her uh, congregation in South, in South California, South California. So um, we just have to keep praying for one another, people. Time's going to get really hard, and we're going to have to learn to work with each other and help one another uh, because time's going to get really hard as we get into this new 2019 and I've been getting a lot, a lot of messages coming in from other prophets and prophetess and messengers. And pretty much everybody's on the same page that 2019 is going to be a very testing time, testing time year, testing time year. So we need to stay close to the father, stay close to the master and know that uh, 
We are more than conquerors through him. We shouldn't give up. We shouldn't get in, disencouraged. I know a lot of uh, the devil is trying to, I know, almost everybody I know is going through something in their life right now. Some people have lost uh, love, have lost uh, family members through death, sickness. Uh, some people have lost their jobs. Like right now, the federal stuff going on with the shutdown. Uh, a lot of people going through misery with that. Uh, can't pay their rent, their bills. And I, you know, it's going to get worse and worse. And then now they talk about this uh, flu thing, making people, demanding people do that. Now, if they pass that in, in Massachusetts, they're absolutely going to pass it everywhere else. You know that. You know that's what it's about. It always have to start somewhere. And then it's spread everywhere. Just like the uh, pot in, in Colorado. Now it's going everywhere. And so, you know, uh, we're just going to have these things going on. We got this new governor coming in Colorado. I told you he's Jewish. And he's a homosexual and he have his two babies on the screen and uh, he adopted and his lover and, you know, and I don't like it. But, you know, we just have to keep praying to Yeshua to, de to deal with these issues, you know, deal with these uh, abortion clinics, deal with these uh, uh, sex trafficking, drug trafficking, uh, these people who are going around uh, uh, kidnapping our children, the clowns and and all these things going on. Now we saw a report this week on TV where they are having so much trouble in the sonor sororities, I'm not saying that, so I'm saying that correctly, in the colleges, you know, all the people get the, the kids dying from drinking alcohol and drugs and all these things going on, sex and all these, uh, all this abuse going on in these places, in these colleges and universities. So we need to be understanding the devil is out to destroy us, destroy our children, destroy ourselves, destroy our our uh the the town and unif the town and um uh, cities we living in and after a while we're gonna we ran out of here to the mountains to the mountains to the wilderness i don't know but i know yeshua got his people working out things uh in the havens as they call them as lois shop talk about them and different people uh in my community as well talk about these havens uh trying to get things prepared for what's coming um so just we need to be really praying right now and asking the Father to lead us and direct our paths, direct our paths. So let me go here and um, read this, giving glory, giving God glory. I never get to read the whole thing. I'm just going to read part of it. I know I need to come back and read another uh, another message that I was reading here some weeks ago from Randall J. Brewer. And I will try to get back to that message because that's an important message as well as this one is. But I'm going to be reading part of this one right now, and I'm going to go over to Maranatha. The Lord is coming. I got a lot of reading to do. And then I want to read uh, Hosea 6 chapter. So I have all these to read. This is the Sabbath. Uh, it is my delight. So as he says here, uh, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thy labor and do all thy work. But the Sabbath day, the seventh day, is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. So this is the Sabbath. So I'm not in a rush. I'm just going to read through these uh, materials that I have on my uh, calendar here to read on my my on my my calendar, but on my desktop here, I'm going to go over these things I have here. So. Just bear with me, people. So, um, Father, be with me as I read your word uh, coming from Randall J. Ru Randall J. Brewer. And also, we're going to be reading other materials coming from the Bible, the written word, uh, Hosea 6 chapter, and Ellen G. White, one of, your, uh, one of your messengers from way back that always sp speaking truth for this end time. So thank you so much for your love. Let your Holy Spirit talk through me, be with me, and this Yeshua, I ask it in Yeshua, I'm going to share name. Amen and amen. So here it is, giving God glory, giving God glory. There is nothing more important than to have your words and actions line up with your position in Christ. You have passed from death to life, from darkness to light, and now it's time to act like it. You are a child of the living God, so live up to who you are. Christ is in you, so you must live up to that standard. In other words, become in practice what you are in position. Peter wrote two epistles and he begins and ends them with a mandate that you grow up and mature spiritually. He does this because there is nothing more tragic than a stunted believer who has not reached spiritual maturity. 
1 Peter 2, 2 says, As newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. He then says in 2 Peter 3, 18, But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Yeshua, HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory both now and forever. Amen. Study that Peter equates growing spiritually with giving God glory. Comprehend what Peter is saying. The master key to spiritual growth is understanding what it means to glorify God. The greatest theme in the history of the universe is that God is to be glorified. When Jesus was born, the angels declared glory to God in the highest and on earth, good will towards men, Luke 2.14. The concept of glorifying God is the reason the world exists. The heavens declare the glory of God, Psalms 91.1. And so do the beasts of the field, Isaiah 43.20. You also were made to glorify God. That's why you exist. In 1647, the Westminster Shorter Catechism uh, uh, proclaimed that the chief end of man is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. This lines up with what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 10.31. Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. No matter what you do, even the most basic necessities of life, like eating and drinking, do all to the glory of God. Jesus came to glorify the Father no matter what price he had to pay. John 12, 27, 28. You also need to aim your life at his glory and his purposes. When you realize that you are able to... When you realize you are alive, I'm sorry, alive to give God glory, you will put yourself in the process of gaining spiritual growth and maturity, okay? Throughout history, the ultimate condemnation of man is that he didn't glorify God. Romans 1, 21, 22 says, although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became fertile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. That's what's going on right now. They, they, they want to do it on their own. They want to do it my way. I don't need God. I can do it my way. Oh, I, we, we become our own gods. You know, we, we don't need God. We don't need him. That's what's going on in the world today. Everybody's denying God. Everybody rejecting God. Everybody's walking away from God. Everybody's just stomping on God. Everybody's throwing God out. And that's what's going on. They have become fools. It is a serious thing not to give glory. Absolutely. Jeremiah 13, 16 NLT says, give glory to the Lord your God before it is too late. Acknowledge him before he brings darkness upon you, causing you to stumble and fall on the darkening mountains. For then when you look for light, you will find only terrible darkness and gloom. The prophet is saying to give glory or else. When people don't give glory, when people don't give God glory, Yeshua glory, God, Yeshua, Yahweh glory, they put themselves in a place of judgment. In Dan 430, King Nebuchadnezzar claimed God's glory for himself and he and became what? Look what he did. He must have happened to him. He became like a beast of the field for seven years, eating grass like oxen, verse 32, 32, 33. In Acts 12, 21, 22, Herod blasphemed God, and immediately an angel of the Lord struck him because he did not give glory to God, and he was eaten by worms and died, verse 23. I know a situation, uh, uh, Clark, uh, Clark Kent, what's the guy named? He used to be the Superman uh, guy, and I can't call his name. Uh, Christopher Reeve. Christopher Reeve, yeah. And I remember reading something by him, and he was, uh, they say he uh, he was denying God, or he did something. And soon he opened his mouth and said he was a Scientologist, and he, be he didn't believe in God, or something he said. And soon he said that he got, he, he, he died. He soon he said that he died. So it's true. It can happen to you today, people. We need to understand the man who made us, our hands, our feet, our arms, our ears, our heart beating, our blood running through. I mean, who else going to do this? Who else? They trying to put these robots together. You know what? They trying to put the robots together to kill you, destroy you. Okay. But they can't do nothing like God has done. They can't create like God has created. Nobody can do that, okay? So you need to go and read uh, your Bibles. I was talking to my friend from, um, 
she's from Kenya and I was talking to her the other day on the phone and we was talking about the goodness of the Lord and and she was telling me Marner I'm finding out about the Sabbath and and it's so true I read it in Genesis I read it in I, I read it in this other part of the Bible and she said oh it's really true I said yeah the Catholics changed that Constantine they did all those changing to God's law God did not change he do not change he's the same yesterday today and forever okay and so uh if he said I come not to destroy the law I came to fulfill the law but everybody wants to say oh well you don't need the law we just under grace we're under grace yeah you're under grace you go ahead and be under grace okay you're dying your sins under grace because if you ain't born again and walking in truth with him he's keeping his commandments he said if you love me keep them so you know what if we can't just love our wives we're going to be fornicating and going out and doing a duchery and doing everything else and beating her up and slapping her around, you think she's going to be around long. Okay. You know, we need to understand love is, I mean, doing obey obedience, obedience is better than sacrifice. Okay. And we need to learn to obey the father, obey the father, follow the father. So it says here, um, let me see. I'm going to go back up here. They know, uh, they refuse to understand. Okay. Let me, let me go. I don't want to miss anything here. Okay. He abandoned, he abandoned them to their foolish thinking and let them do things. They should never be done. Their lives became full of every kind of wickedness, sin, greed, hate, envy, murder, quarreling, deception, malicious behavior, and gossip. They are backstabbers, haters of God, insolent, proud and boastful. They invent new ways of sinning. Ain't they been doing that? New ways of sinning. That's what they're doing. New ways of sinning. Telling the children now in the schools, they need to be a uh, transgender. You need to be a transgender. You can choose your own sex. You can choose your own sex. You don't have to be a male. You don't have to be a female. You could just be a transgender, whatever it is. The word is, I can't even hardly pronounce it because Yahweh said he only made male or female. I asked the Lord one time, I say, father, what's with this homosexuality? What's with this? He say, I only made male or female. He told me, he told me, I heard his voice. He told me. And so, you know, it's true. He only made male or female. So you better choose who you are and be who you are, people out there. And repent, repent, okay? So he said here, they invent new ways of sinning and they disobey their parents. They refuse to understand, break their promises, are heartless, have no mercy. They know God's justice requires that those who do these things deserve to die. Yet they do them anyway. Worse yet, they encourage others to do them also. That's right. They're encouraging the whole world to follow after the beast. They're going to be doing it right now in little things. If you can't follow Yeshua in little things, you won't follow him in bigger things. You won't, people. I'm telling, me, I'm telling you, it won't. It don't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Some people say, well, oh, when that time come, I could just do it then. No, if you're not making decisions every day, right now in the little things, you won't be making decisions later. You won't. You won't, people. Believe me. Believe me, trust me, okay? Yet, worse yet, they encourage others to do them too. This doom existence happens when people fail to glorify God, when their words and actions don't line up with his. Jesus said in John 8, 44, you are your father, the devil. You are of the father, your devil. I'm gonna say it again. You are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do, Okay. As a true believer in Christ, it should bother you when God is dishonored. It absolutely bothers me. I'm telling you, it bothers me when people just go around mocking God and talking nonsense and saying, oh, I never pray. Oh, I, I don't do this. I don't do that. And, oh, and, and, and who, uh, you know, I don't need that stuff. I just need scientists. I just need new age. I just need aliens. I just need, you know, all the things that, oh, I just need Hinduism. I just need Buddhism. I just need Catholicism. I just need to worship the, the, the Buddha doll. I just need, you know, all these things bother me, people. It should bother you. We don't have but one God, one God, hallelujah. One God who made all things, all living things. As a true believer in Christ, it should bother you when God is dishonored. David said in Psalm 69, 9, passion, pass, passion for your house has consumed me. 
and the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. The message Bible says, I love you more than I can say because I'm madly in love with you. They blame me for everything that they dislike about you. The same verse was quoted in John 2, 17 after Jesus cleaned the temple by driving out the money changers who were there dishonoring God. Oh, we got so many money changers. Everybody's selling the DVDs. Everybody's selling the DVs. Everybody's selling the CDs. Everybody's selling, selling, selling books, 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 books. I told you guys some other weeks ago, it's all right to have a book or two or something out. Maybe if God directed you, but people are taking the word from the Bible and, and selling that stuff. And, and you can just go to the Bible and teach it and preach it. Uh, people just doing all these things that God didn't call them to do. I don't know. I'm not trying to be judgmental, but but, you know, why are we doing so much of this stuff? I tried to write a book on poetry. I tried to do all that stuff. I never could get it out in the 80s. I never could get it out in the 90s. And so I just say, Father, whatever, and I give it away free. Let people read my stuff, whatever. And I'm just saying it's time to be about our father's business. People say, I pay you. Oh, you, if I give you a word, if you uh, I uh, give me $50 and I give you a word. Well, you should be giving a person a word, a good word, freely not charging them for that. Okay. And I, I just have to say it is true. People Yahweh cho drove them out, drove them out of the place. Okay. For all these uh, uh, money changers who was dishonoring God, this was something Jesus could not tolerate. So he took a whip and drove them out concerning the church at Ephesus. Revelation 2, 2 says, you cannot bear those who are evil. The people at Ephesus felt the pain of God being dishonored and not being given the glory he richly deserves. The greatest call of a believer is to glorify God, and this happens when you let his glory shine through you. 2 Corinthians 4, 6, NLT says, For God who said, let there be light in the darkness, has made this light shine in our hearts, so we could know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Okay. Adam and Eve lived in the presence of God. The, glo they tr the glory of God engulfed them as they walked with him in the cool of the day. When they sinned, they were removed from the God because fallen men cannot experience the glory of God, nor can they give glory, nor can they give him glory. Okay, it's true. You can't. You got to have the Holy Spirit inside of you. You got to repent if you have fallen. You have to, people. From that moment on, God has endeavored to get man to see his glory. Adam saw it, and now God wants you to see it as well. It was for this reason that he sent Jesus to walk the earth, Romans eleven thirty six. For of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be God, I mean, be, be glory forever. The, oh man, oh man. the message Bible says everything comes from him. Everything happens through him. Everything ends up in him. Always glory, always praise. Yes, yes, yes. The focus of your life is to glorify God. And this happens when you confess Jesus as Lord. Philippians 2, 9, 11. You cannot give glory to God unless you give glory to his son, Yeshua HaMashiach. Jesus said in John 5, 23, he who does not honor the son does not honor the father who sent him. When Jesus is the Lord of your life, you will obey him always and do the things he tells you to do. Okay. And I'm going to stop there. I, I can't go on with that, but I'm going to stop there. What a wonderful message. So you need to make sure Yeshua is leading you in all your life, leading you in everything you're doing, that he's telling you to do it and not man and not your own self, not leaning on your own understanding. So let's go here now and read from um, Hosea, and then I'm going to go to Ellen G. White and let you see what she says. But I'm going to go to Hosea first, uh, and read here from, um, uh, sixth chapter. And I thought that was so amazing. He gave me sixth chapter. And then, uh, I was already going to read to 12 about the ceiling and a lot of rain. And he gave me this two chapter here. So as that opens up slowly here, uh, hit my voice. Uh, let me make sure I don't run out of. Uh, okay. Let me shut some of these things down. Maybe I can get this to open here. I don't know why it's not opening here. Okay. All right. Here it is. <clears throat> no, that's not it.
My e sort won't open. What's that about? Hmm? What'd you say? Okay, okay, it's opening now. All right, all right, okay. Uh, okay, here it is, people. I didn't know why it's taking so long to open. Uh, let me go here and try to widen that up. Um, Come on, open, open, open. Uh, electronics are really weird sometimes. But anyway, <laughs> I'm having a lot of trouble with them this week, I tell you. Uh, but anyway, let's go here and read this from Hosea, Hosea uh, 6 chapter. And it says here, Israel and Judah are unrepentant. Israel and Judah are unrepentant. <clears throat> Come and let us return to the Lord, for he has torn, for he has torn, but he will heal us. He has stricken, but he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. On the third day, he will raise us up that we may live in his sight. Let us know, let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. His going forth is established as the morning. He will come to us like the rain, like the latter and the former rain to the earth. O Ephraim, what shall I do to you? O Judah, what shall I do to you? For your faithfulness is like a morning cloud, and like the early dew, it goes away. Therefore, I have hewn them by the prophets. I have slain by the words, I have slain them by the words of my mouth, and your judgments are like light that goes forth. For I the Desire mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. But like men, they transgressed the covenant. There they dealt treacherously with me. Gilad is a city of evildoers and defiled with blood. As bands of robbers lie in wait for a man, so the company of priests murder on the way to Shishem. Surely they commit lewdness. lewdness. I have seen a terrible, I have seen a horrible thing. I have seen a horrible thing in the house of Israel. There is the hollow tree of Ephraim and Israel is defiled. Also of Judah, a harvest is appointed for you when I return the captives of my people. So I'm going to go here and read now from Ellen. And, you know, I'm going to see what you see here in uh, Hosea 6.3. It's talk about he will come to us like the rain, like the latter and former rain to the earth. Okay, so let me read here from uh, from uh, Maranatha, where she's talking about it here on page 212. The ceiling and the latter rain, the ceiling and the latter rain. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. 2 Timothy 2.19. Before the work is closed up and the sealing of God's people is finished, we shall receive the outpouring of the Spirit of God. Angels from heaven will be in our midst. Our Heavenly Father claims not at our hands that which we cannot perform. He desires His people to labor earnestly to carry out His purpose for them. They are to pray for power, expect power, and receive power that they may grow up into the full statute of men and women in Christ Yeshua, HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, you got Jesus Christ here, Christ Jesus. Not all members of the church are cultivating personal piety. Therefore, they do not understand their personal responsibility. They do not realize that it is their privilege and duty to reach the high standard of Christian perfection. Are we looking forward to the latter rain, confidently hoping for a better day? When the church shall be endured with power from on high and thus fitted for work, the latter rain will never refresh and invigorate the indolent who do not use the powers God has given them. It's so important, people. I know last night, the other night, I told you Thursday night, I got all those people together. We prayed and got that guy, the angels got that guy to stop. They got that guy to turn himself in. We need to understand the powers that we have through Yeshua and use them. That's what she's saying right here. Okay, we are in great need of the pure, life-giving atmosphere that nurtures and invigorates the spiritual life. We need greater earnestness. The solemn message given us to give to the world is to be proclaimed with greater 
Fervency. Fervency. I'm not saying that right. Fervency. Yeah. F-E-R-V-E-N-C-Y. Even with an intensity that will impress unbelievers, leading them to see that the Most High is working with us and that he is the source of our efficiency and strength. Are you using all your powers in an effort to bring the lost sheep back to the fold? There are thousands upon thousands in ignorance who might be warned. Pray as you have never prayed before for the power of Christ. Pray for the inspiration of his spirit that you may be filled with a desire to save those who are perishing. Let the prayer ascend to heaven. God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us that the way may be known upon earth, thy saving health among all the nations. Psalms 67, 1, 2. Okay, so that's what I'm gonna end with today. And yes, I would love to have the latter rain. Uh, I know when I was born uh, again at 16 and I know I, I, I felt the power of Yeshua all over me. Uh, it was like really amazing because I could look through crowds of people and see the wicked on one side and see the good in the middle. And I could, it's just powerful. You could look at your hands and they don't even look like the same hands you had. The grass was greener outside. I don't know. You can tell when the spirit of God is all over you. And then you are uh, speaking other tongues. Some people, uh, you have other gifts, but I'm telling you, it, it's amazing if we would just trust Yeshua. Trust him, people. This is the time to sound the trumpet loudly. This is the time to speak boldly. It, and, and like he said, come boldly to the throne of grace. If you're sinning right now today, if you need to come out of your sins, you need to go and go boldly through the throne of Yeshua. Say, Father, here I am. I'm a sinner. Heal me, Father. Deliver me, Father. Help me, Lord. Help me, Father. Help me. And he will help you, people. But you need to confess your sins. He said, confess your sins and he will forgive you. He will protect you. He will look after you. As uh, I'm going to close here now with my other song, and I'm going to let you guys go. Psalm 70. Remember I told you guys about Psalm 70? We need to be reading Psalm 70 right now because it's something that I, I got, uh, the Lord gave me for the year and I'm going to be reading Psalm 70 every day. So if you want to just follow with me every day, read Psalm 70. It's not even that long, five verses, okay? So it's just amazing. He says, oh Lord, do not delay, do not delay. Uh, to the chief musician, a Psalm of David, to bring to remembrance. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Let them be ashamed and confounded who seek my life. Let them be turned back and confused who desire my hurt. Let them be turned back because of their shame who say, aha, aha. Let all those who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. And let those who love your salvation say continuously, let God be magnified. But I am poor and needy. Make haste to me, O God. You are my help and my deliverer. O Lord, do not delay. Do not delay. Oh, hallelujah. What a powerful prayer to say every day for your needs to be met. Uh, you know, he said, if you, if you uh, call on me, I will hear you. But he says that he will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Yeshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. So Father, I ask that you help the people today to call on your name, Father. Let them to know that you will not delay. Hallelujah. You will hear them and answer them, Father. Help them to trust in you. I ask that you be with every man, woman, boy, girl in the prayer box, every the, the every believer, uh, every uh, 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 born again person out there, uh, every person who need a savior to give their life to you today, Father. Uh, ask that you be with all the nations, be with Israel, be with America, be with North America, South America, all the nations around the world today. Uh, the Hindus over there, Father, who need a savior in their life. Uh, the Muslims who need a savior in their life. Uh, Catholicism, atheism, uh, Satanism, uh, all these people hung up in the witchcraft, Father. I ask that you allow them to come out today. I release angels right now to go forth and chastise them, Father, to bring them to your bosom, Father. We know time is running out. We need a Savior. The world need a Savior. America need to repent. Israel need to repent. We need to know that you soon coming, Father, and you want to pour out your latter rain on all your people, but they, some of them will reject you still, Father. Reject you still, my God. I ask that you help us, Father, not to reject you. Help us to come to you, come to you, return to you, return to you, as you just said in Hosea 
Hosea 6. Return to you, Father. We just thank you so much for your love and your care for us, Father. We ask that your Holy Spirit touch your people, awaken them, Father, today. We just bind Satan and all his evil angels below, beyond, beneath, mentioned and unmentioned, known and unknown. We bind all evil spirits on assignment against us in every way. And we ask that your Holy Spirit will cover us, Father. We ask that your blood will cover us. Uh, we ask that you put your blood over our doorposts of our homes, of our families, of our grandchildren, of our children, uh, keeping us safe from accidents, Father, uh, knowing that we, uh, the greater he that is in us than he that is in the world. And without you, without you, we can do nothing. We can do absolutely nothing without you, Father. So we thank you so much for your love for us. We ask all these blessings in the mighty name of Yeshua, HaMashiach. And you guys have a, sh a wonderful Shabbat Shalom. I love you so much. I thank you so much. Uh, we thank you for watching. Uh, we thank you for all the support. We love your support. Keep giving. Keep blessing. Keep uh, saying prayers for us as well as we say prayers for you every day and every night, every day, every day and night, every day. And if you want your names in the prayer box, you can always write me on my email and uh, we will absolutely uh, put you in the prayer box. <clears throat> I'm telling you people, uh, this is not my ministry. This is Yeshua's ministry, okay? He the one raised this ministry. And so we know for a new year, we're going to go forth. We're going to speak power powerfully. And we hope that people will realize the times is running out. I will put more things in the description box for you today, uh, more news and more things you need to look at. But I'm going to go now. And I thank you so much for watching. All your givings help many people worldwide for food, personal needs, and equipment to help us continue this online ministry. When you give your help missionaries win souls for the kingdom of Yahweh. We all need each other to help souls enter the kingdom. You will be blessed from Abba Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, give us for all your prayers and contributions. So I'm going to go now, people. I love you so much. Thank you for watching. Uh, Shabbat Shalom. We love you so much. Shabbat Shabbat Shalom. Love you so much. Bye-bye.